Liz Kitley, the reigning ACC Player of the Year. Ready to get it all underway. The crowd for post-Thanksgiving yeah. Sunday. Some of the little Thanksgiving mix. Here so far, Virginia Tech will start with the basketball to after Liz Kitley won that opening tip. Take a look at the starting five as we expected. Kitley, Soul King, Awusu, Amor at that point guard spot late in the offense as they try to find Kitley but launch it a little bit too far. First turnover of the game comes against Virginia Tech. Hokies, uh, as usual, trying to get Elizabeth Kitley involved from the jump. That time pass a little too long. It's usually a pretty good thing. You're trying to get it down inside to Liz Kitley. Boy, she can finish one of the top interior players in this league. You're on the other side for the Lancers now. Let's start Williams, Ship Davis, Turner, and Leroy. As well as rounding out that starting lineup in uh, Athia. A couple of turnovers to start this game. Inauspicious. Working off that post-Thanksgiving dinner. Yeah. How was yours? Good? Really good. I've, <laughs> I've, I've had a couple turnovers already, too. <laughs> Trying to get back into shape after it. A little full-court pressure coming out of the Lancers now for the first time in today's game, but the Hokies get it passed. You know, that was one of the elements I know that Coach Kenny Brooks told us is he said, we cannot rely on just George Amor to break the press. We've got to get everyone involved in doing a better job of it that last possession. The whistle comes down inside against the Lancers. Had a great conversation with Coach Brooks, who obviously has went ahead and turned this into one of the top programs in the ACC and in the country so far. A couple of tournament appearances, most recently with Virginia Tech. No stranger here to the state after playing at James Madison as the inbound and the feed coming for Liz Kitling. Great screen by Kayla King. A couple old high school teammates teaming up there on the baseline out of bounds for a wide open layup. Letting it fly early. Three-pointer is off the mark this time for Ship Davis. And a rebound coming inside for the Hokies who are looking to move quickly. Longwood will mix it up. Play man-to-man -man on these misses like this. Kitley rolls a little bit too far that time, but a fight for the rebound won't go. So the first couple of points come on the inbound back right to Kitley. Watch the back screen by Kayla King for her high school teammate. Breaks wide open, no help. Beautiful pass inbounds. Kenny Brooks is really good in special situations like baseline out of bounds. Great angle right there by our crew. Beautiful out of shot. the get-go. This three-pointer will not go. That's one of the problems with Longwood right now. Three-pointer was off the mark for Turner that time, but has been that field goal shooting percentage. They're not afraid to shoot it, but on the season shooting somewhere around 30% at 33, in, in fact. And they just got to be able to get some more of those to go through. Yeah, only 58 points per game, 30% field goal percentage, not good. A negative rebound margin and, uh, and turnovers. They, they commit a lot, but they do force quite a few, too. So Wusu, one on one. Little switch action. Get it to Kitley with a mismatch, and it's stolen away. Another turnover coming against Virginia Tech here early. Ken Longwood find their first couple of baskets of today's game. Terry Williams, really quick point guard, a transfer from JMU. Williams flies it up, but it won't go. That's one of the big mismatches is Liz Kitley and her size. It's 6'6", there's no one on the other side that can match that height. Driving his aim where it won't go, but a rebound for Kitley to put back. Too hard. A couple of easy misses inside here early for Kitley. Longwood coming off a really tough game at Louisville on Friday afternoon. Made the trek over from Kentucky. As you like to say, that was not a head coach's schedule. These last couple of weeks is the first jumper is through that time for Aya. But uh, not, a, not a coach's schedule when you look at it. Louisville, you got Virginia Tech, other Power 5 opponents in there, and a couple of teams in the top 10 of the country to get it started. Yeah, that is clearly an AD made that schedule. As a former coach, I'm offended by that schedule. But it's going to be a great challenge, and, that, and that'll pay dividends once they get in league play. King shots off the mark. Low scoring affair so far here from Castle Coliseum. And an offensive foul coming against Leroy as she was trying to go down into the paint. 
Taylor King has gotten to be such a good defender. The best perimeter defender, I think, on this team, although Trailer may have something to say about that. Kayana coming in the game right now. But Kayla King has improved so much defensively since she got here. Get a good look of Coach Erica Langbaum Gomery leading the charge for Longwood in her first season over there for the Lancers. But no newbie when it comes to college coaching, head coaching experience, and been all around in the Division I ranks. She's been in four out of the five power conferences. That's impressive. Have a U-Haul ready at all times. He's coaching lifestyles as King's right wing three is right through. Something the Hokies haven't relied on as much as they have in past seasons, but I think that'll pick up as the year goes on. We've got a little more diversity, a little more versatility out of this offensive group with these new players that they've added. Going to have to be able to get the long-range ball going for the Lancers as this triple will not go. They're just mismatched out inside. Turner shots off the mark. And now in transition, Taylor Soul. A little bit too hard that time. We talked about her running the floor. What an athlete. Transfer from Boston College. What she can do in those passing lanes with her reach. And another offensive foul coming against Leroy. Now Leroy. Take a look at this. Soul moving her feet, staying in legal guarding position. And Leroy with the offensive foul. 4 core pressure coming out of the Lancers yet again as Amor will get this. Longwood will mix it up. Some man-to-man, -man, kind of token, not really trapping. Then they'll go 1-2-1-1, one, 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 and they'll really trap and be aggressive in the full court. They're going to give you some different looks, especially on dead balls. Free throws. Kiana Trailer checked in. Here's the feed down to Kinley, and that's what Coach Kenny Brooks would like to see every single time your point guard goes in and gets it off to your ACC Player of the Year. Amor is so good. Does so many different things. Chapman shot won't go. Here's Trailer over to King and out Amor with a right wing three. The jumper's off. Good skip pass, wide open three. Janae Turner lets it fly and it will not go. Just 0 for 5 from three so far. The Lancers have not been able to get much going offensively. Well, Virginia Tech is only allowing. 48 points a game. First in the ACC. Trailer lets her first fly. That's off. A two and a half minute scoring drop. Right now by Longwood. And this one misses everything for Hartley. And a slow start on either side. 72 Virginia Tech does have that lead with the first break. Boy, she had a real quick start when it came to the Bahamas. Couple of real nice shots. She's got herself averaging over 12 points per game coming off the bench. Yeah, 27 points and 13 rebounds in those two big wins in the Bahamas. She was a big reason why the Hokies got those two quality wins. Thank you. See, you got two point guards like this. How much can that help each other out? Amor can, you know, get some shots open, can kind of run the court a little bit more so but he got two like that, right? Oh, oh it's a tremendous help. And, and neither one of them minds playing off the ball. And matter of fact, both of them are very comfortable giving the ball up and then playing more of a scoring role. And then you get someone like Owusu who can bring the basketball down the court in a big way too. High screen coming out of Greg. Now Trailer trying to get her first. And it won't go. Halfway into it out. Out of bounds on Greg. Coach Kenny Brooks joked in that Bahamas class <laughs> that if he could give out an MVP award, he'd give it to Greg. She got three early fouls. Kitley was in foul trouble too, but all of a sudden, just firing her way back in there, De'Asia Gregg was able to have a real nice showing. Said she played as bad as she could in one game and as well as she could in the next. <laughs> <laughs> now Longwood trying to snap this three and a half minute scoring drop now. They go in close. And a blocking foul coming against Virginia Tech for the team second. Collision down there in the double teams. First team foul. First team Charged with the foul. He's playing there man to man. They've been really good defensively this year. But now holding this Longwood team to just 11% shooting. One of nine. Ten seconds to find a shot now. Right wing three will not go. Knocked out of there yet again. Virginia Tech 
forces another turnover. Of those turnovers coming the way of Longwood, Virginia Tech has turned them into five points. And add three more on for George A. Moore. Yeah, the, the three transfers have fit in seamlessly on the defensive end. Offensively, still working their way around, trying to find that chemistry. Oh, what a mismatch for, or a miscommunication, I should say, sends it out of bounds. Defense turns into offense, and so many times you have numbers. Defense is scrambling a little bit, and somebody is inevitably left wide open. This time it's Georgia. Amor. Well, the one thing Coach Erica Lang Montgomery told us is we've got to be better at the turnover battle. These five early turnovers, I'm sure, are not what she was talking about. Yeah, she was pretty pleased against uh, Louisville the first half where they only had seven, but then they had 13 in the second half against a really talented Louisville team, as we know. It's the elbow. Buckets coming in for Owusu, getting on the scoreboard for the first time this afternoon. Love Owusu's mid-range game. Old school. How about this? A straight drive to the hoop, but it's off for DeAsia Reed and a whistle coming on that rebound. is really a good one-on-one -on -one player. You have to you have to come out and guard her because she can shoot the three, but she creates a little space, really comfortable with that mid-range jump shot. You know, it's hard, I think, Mac, to see someone like Awusu who has such command of the basketball, the way she's able to handle it, bring the ball down the court. I mean, she is showing why she's an All-American and a third team at that in the 2021 season, but she is a tremendous ball handler. Yeah, yeah, she can literally play any position on the perimeter. I'm not so sure she couldn't play down low, too. She played a big part in the win over Kentucky with 16 points and six rebounds in the Bahamas. To the free throw line for the first time today, Kitley's first will go as that's five team fouls coming against this Longwood group. Virginia Tech stretching to a double-digit lead now of 11. That one hits just about a corner and then through. And Kitley will get a rest here for a little bit as Trailer will come back into the game. Here in the first quarter, Kitley already with six points and six rebounds. And she's missed a couple chippies, honestly. Yeah, no, we joked at the end of that first time out and said, yeah, Kitley missed a couple. And then we said, well, she's got four points and five rebounds, five minutes into the game. And this is close to the hoop finish. Comes out of Ship Davis. Two points. Really nice play by Ship Davis. Good patience right there. Shot fake up and under. A lot of contact there. Some of the Hokie fans wanting something called. Here's Trailer driving inside, and there is the foul they were looking for. Yep, Milou Venema. Grad student out of the Netherlands. A little physical on the defensive end right there. Longwood will run 9 to 10 deep or so for Coach Montgomery off the bench. Now, she's going to have to be a little bit careful. This is six early fouls coming in this first quarter against this bunch. Yeah, and Virginia Tech traditionally a, a good free throw shooting team. This team no different at 77% so far this season. First one missed. Yeah, already got two on Leroy and Anya that... It's going to be tough to be able to slow it down here a little bit, be physical inside as the rebound comes for Taylor Soul. Kayla King trying to make him pay. It's off. And out of bounds will stay with Virginia Tech. Last touch by the Lancers. What Lang Montgomery was talking about, first-year head coach in Division I, although she was longtime head coach at Flagler College, yeah. tremendously successful in Florida. Coached at both Florida and Florida State as an assistant. No, that was legal. I know. I wondered how that. You got to change the wardrobe. There's a left wing three. That one missed for Multiple Taylor, but chances. another offensive rebound. Fourth opportunity. His trailer driving. Physical play down inside to the free throw line to try to earn on the hard way yet again. It's going to be Kiana Trailer. This was a physical one down to the payback. Got that good first step. Help side comes across, trying to take the charge. Steph Davis called for the block. Transfer from Holy Cross. Pretty sure Davis was inside that restricted area. Nonetheless, if she had her feet set. Minute 36 left to go with this first quarter. Virginia Tech right now on a 12-2 run. And make it 13-2 as that free throw is good. How many times have we seen Trailer with that left hand and that good first step? 
get by a defender and get all the way to the rim. I thought it was interesting too as that second one goes. You asked Coach Brooks, you said, hey, well, you know, Trevor was obviously a phenomenal player in her freshman year in that starting lineup. She's coming off the bench. Well, how did those conversations go? And he said, just as you would expect, she said, I'm going to be the sixth player in this league this season. Yeah, here's an all a transfer from an all Big Ten player. Came in in a different role last year, a different role now, but had success either way. That's the kind of culture that they have established here. Soul from the free throw line, and this one got a little bit of a tip right of the line that time by Germano. And it will stay with Virginia Tech. I haven't seen Liz Kitley for the last couple of minutes. With Greg and Taylor Soul in there, they're able to give the ACC Player of the Year some much needed rest early on. Five seconds, and Owusu will find it from the elbow. One on one. That's a new dimension for the Hokies, really. She creates space so well. It really does. And here she slides through. Offensive foul. They moved the foot a little bit that time to Germano. And that will send it back over to Virginia Tech. Yet again, another turnover. That's five now in the last six minutes. Offensive foul right here. And if the, all, if the defense is the aggressor, it makes it really easier for the official to make that call. Offense had to move to to try to have an advantage right there. Good play by Owusu creating that opportunity. Less than 30 seconds to go with the first one here from Castle Coliseum. Baseline jumper out of trailer. Won't go, but Greg's there to swallow it up and put it back in. The Georgia Tech transfer with a key offensive rebound and stick back. Both these two teams built on a lot of transfers on either side, and so far for Virginia Tech, they have meshed quite well. Three seconds to find something, and a right wing three will not go. Unselfish play results in really good offense for the Hokies. Georgia Amor with the penetration. That will, that will help the recruiting efforts, I'm sure, for the Lancers. Well, now it's going to be Longwood that's trying to find a little offense here offensively. They had to go out after a team that made the NCAA tournament and get a lot of those transfers across the country. That's the new age of college basketball. Coach, Coach Montgomery kind of said, it's what we got to do. Go out there and get some of those transfers. Yeah, they, you know, that's, that's, the, that's the way the rules are right now. And, uh, and a big part of college basketball, college sports in general, but three Division I transfers and a couple JUCOs remaking the roster, trying to get Longwood back to the NCAA tournament. In fact, the big thing when you look at that, transfers from different schools, yes, but no one on there had more than 17 games played a season ago. And that was something, too, that we heard from this Longwood staff as this is stolen away and a whistle comes against Longwood. But you can't teach experience, and you can't get game experience unless you're out here doing it. Yep. She said, we've got to do that. These first couple of weeks can be tough, but once we get game experience, I like where we're sitting. Oh, everybody, fans, coaches, everybody wants it to happen right now, but it takes time to gel. It takes time to learn each other. It takes time to develop that chemistry on both ends of the floor that you need, and both of these coaches will be a whole lot better off in January than they are tonight. So, Mac, what they're looking at right now, the ball hit the coach on the sideline. The three officials are getting together to talk this over right now. He's reaching out and hit her paper. You can see just hit right on through. You don't see that too often. I've not seen the coach deny the wing like that. <laughs> coach Lang Montgomery jumping in there. You only get five players on defense, not five at a coach. He's going to go over to the replay now to have a conversation. Show by example. Just got a piece of that paper a little bit. Coach Kenny Brooks saw it right away, too. He was pointing, throwing his hands up. <laughs> An unusual play for sure. So it will Ball stay reverse. with Virginia Tech. With 11 on the shot clock. 
So you get that fixed up on the shot clock. Game clock at 9.24 to go until halftime. And the feed a little bit too far down inside. It will go out of bounds, and it will be Virginia Tech's third turnover of the game. Yeah, Taylor Soul looked for the high-low right there. Didn't quite throw it accurately enough for Elizabeth Kitley to haul it in. That's a good concept, though, that high-low takes away the help side. Venema off the rim that time with the jumper. How do you get this offense going along? Two of 13 overall, 0 for 5 from 3. They've struggled as Longwood, as this is an offensive foul coming against Kitley, will send it the other way. But, Mac, they've struggled to be able to get inside, get things going. How do you get this offense moving? It's hard to establish something inside, but they do a really good job of, of ball screening that last time. And, of course, there's Kitley trying to establish uh, post up and uh, put that hand behind you. Anytime you reach back with that hand, they're going to catch you for that offensive foul. And an extra step will be yet another turnover coming against Longwood. Yeah, Steph Davis with turnover right there. Engineer coming from Holy Cross. But uh, but the previous possession for Longwood, they set a nice ball screen and, and got Venema wide open, and she just couldn't knock it down. But it's going to be hard to establish anything close to that rim with Kitley guarding the blocks. Here's Kayla King. We saw her go off. On the first night, as this one's out of bounds and missed it all, we saw her go off on the first night of the women's college basketball season on that Monday night. Hit a school record nine three-pointers in that game. Trying to get her back up to speed now, back to that shooting like we saw early on. Yeah, on her way to 33 points, a career high. Letting it fly for the right wing. And this time connecting, Chapman gets the first triple to go for Longwood. And you asked about that. That's a quick ball reversal. One side to the other. The help side didn't close out quick enough. And Chapman made him pay with a nice three-point shot. King wants another one. And that time missed. Didn't get anything. And out of bounds. And we'll go back over to Longwood. Watch the ball. Swings from one side to the other very quickly. And a uh, short closeout by Kitley didn't get it done. That's another way. You can take Kitley away from the basket, make her come out on the floor. That gives you some opportunities to get to the rim. Kitley's got herself six points, six rebounds so far. Long ball won't go, and Kitley gets her seventh rebound. Good look, though, by Chip Davis again off a of ball screen. Chip Davis had 14 against Louisville. So the drive inside, and Amor was fouled hard. Amor with a couple of reverse dribbles, got all the way to the rim, drew the foul. 80% free throw shooter. You want her getting to the line. Watch this in transition. Spin move, getting away from the defense. Penetrate, split the defenders. He goes to the free throw line. Nice play by the shooter from Australia. She's in a bunch of categories in the ACC in the top 10 and in multiple categories. Made threes, three-point percentage, assist, obviously. Yeah. Here we go. The assist to turnover ratio. That's a huge one. A lot of coaches look at that one especially. Assist to turnover as Taylor Soul gets the rebound and Virginia Tech will get another opportunity now. Good defense right away. there. Chapman made the three on the other end, deflected that ball away and got a steal for the Lancers. Williams at the top trying to get this offense set up now for Longwood. The drive and dish, left wing three. Half wham and out. It won't go for Ship Davis. Numbers. And so runs the court better than just about anyone in this league and runs her way to a two-point layup. First field goal for the Hokies in the second quarter. Took a little while to get that partner. Yeah. Just a touch under 10 points per game for Seoul so far at 9.8. Chardonnay Hartley with the runner. George Amor off. But Kitley right there for that offensive rebound again. That's a category that Virginia Tech has been killing at. Counting. And another one coming up for Liz Kitley. Talk about how Taylor Seoul runs the floor. 
as well as anybody, like you said, in the league. And then Kitley, one-on-one -on -one down low with the height advantage, took her time. The and one opportunity. Preseason All-American, preseason ACC Player of the Year after an ACC Player of the Year performance last year. That makes it the old-fashioned three-point play. And Virginia Tech, a 19-point leader back. Kenny Brooks talked about the fact that she is she is certainly the, the focal point of everybody's defense, and uh, everybody has decided it's it, it, our best bet is to rough Kitley up, and she is taking a beat but, but continuing to produce at a very high level. The thing is you don't see her get down or discouraged much either. Not a lot of emotion on the face. Just go down the court, do your job again, and that's... She understands what's coming. Yeah. When you're the player of the year, you're going to get extra attention. Every scouting report starts with you. Down to two seconds. This one stolen away by Greg. Here comes Kiana Trailer. Should go the full court line. Triple team down inside, but Kitley there to make it all right. Kitley already with the double double. Coach Erica Lang Montgomery takes a timeout as Virginia Tech has a 21 point advantage. Would much in part to Liz Kitley. Boy, down to the paint. She's been dominant. She's got herself another double double yet again. Got her fifth straight double double. She's now eighth with a thousand points in the Virginia Tech program, third in history in rebounds. You see some of them right there. The senior from Summerfield, North Carolina. You see why she is player of the year. They're going to have to start doing kind of like in, in baseball, they do the hit streaks. How long? This is the double double streak that Liz Kitley's on right now. As you said, five straight. She has not wavered once so far this season. A little bit of contact will draw a whistle inside. Yeah, Steph Davis kind of swung her arms through trying to get some space. Not intentional, but she was trying to create space right here. Brings her arm through Ooh. and just catches DeAsia Gregg. Anytime contact like that, the officials will go over to the replay just to make sure nothing flagrant, nothing over that, as Greg looks to be okay. Contact above the neck and shoulders. Here's another look of it. I think it's a basketball play, though. I don't think it's anything, wasn't anything intentional from, from this point of view. Take a replay look at it over there. What's your take on replay in college basketball, Mike? I'm fine with replay, but there ought to be a time limit. That, that we don't need to see a replay for three and four minutes. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you can't tell in 60 seconds, it was whatever it was called. Yeah. Well, this is a little bit different situation. Right. We know it was an offensive foul. We're just seeing if there was anything flagrant. But again, if, if you don't know in 60 seconds whether it was uh, flagrant or not, I'd say moving on, wouldn't you? Yeah. Like you said, it looked like a straight-up basketball play. Nothing flagrant there. And when you're sitting at home watching on television, you can go to the kitchen and get a snack or whatever you want to do. <laughs> but when you're here in the stands, it's interminable when you have to wait on the replays for an extended period of time. But you do want, as a coach, you do want them to get it right. The thing that gets me is the two officials will look, they'll make a determination, and then bring the third official over. Sometimes it seems like just a delayed process trying to get to the point. No flagrant there, just a common foul. And that's going to be an offensive one coming against Longwood, who now has their third team foul after having six of them come at the first quarter. It's been a physical game for Longwood so far. Yeah, Steph Davis is a, is a physical player, but again, she was just trying to make an offensive move. Little zone press this time. Probably try to trap in the half-court area. Should come right here. And the Hokies break it to perfection. This one denied by the front of the rim, though, and a rebound coming inside now from Longwood. And challenged Kitley there and did an effective job. Good job by Lang Longwood in transition from the full court press to the half court. Steph Davis. Here's the drive and a block. Greg gets a piece of it and knocked it out of bounds. Good job blocking Bailey Williams shot, the transfer from JMU. Got Byer, but you got to get all the way there. Greg denies that. He's such a smart basketball player. The 
shot won't go, but the rebound comes inside for Great hustle by Trailer to get that rebound. Shoot from a long way. And another foul coming against Longwood now. Steph Davis again. That's what Coach has said. It's not about who starts the game. Kiana Trailer has got herself a couple of points down inside. She's been able to make a couple of shots. Four rebounds on the other side. A lot of good quality minutes so far in this ballgame. Yeah, one thing about a player, if you're not in the starting lineup, you can still make the coach play you. Defend. Help on offense. Make open shots. She's doing all those things. Yeah. Inside, double team this time is Kitley. She'll find the open shooter. Owusu down in the corner. Ashley Owusu knocks in the track. He said, I've got the double double with points and rebounds. I'm going to work on the assist. Well, basically, everyone's got two on them now. Two, two, two on the other side for Longwood. No one with three fouls, but something they're going to have to be mindful of. And Kitley knocks it out of there. Amor looking to run hurry. And Trailer will slow it down. Now they stop and pop front of the rim, but she was fouled. So Kiana Trailer will go to the free throw line, a spot where Virginia Tech has spent some time. They're six of nine for the free throw line. Good pull up right here. I thought she might kick it back to Amor, but she's wide open from 15 feet. Just a little contact before she comes back down on the floor. Sends Trailer to the free throw line where she's almost an 80% free throw shooter. That little 15-footer has been open all afternoon so far for Virginia Tech, much because they're trying to pack that paint against Kitley that you've seen Owusu make a couple of those shots. Trainers made a couple of those or have been fouled, and she makes her first free throw to put Virginia Tech up by 25. Yeah, team's still struggling from the, both teams combined for four for 19 from the three-point line despite the fact that Owusu did make the last one they had for Virginia Tech. Team shooting just 14% from the field right now. Needs some offense. One of eight from long range, and that's been kind of the main offense for Longwood, who has not been able to counter with anyone against Luce Kitley and her size down inside the ACC Player of the Year. Long three. Too hard that time, and Greg might have got away with a push a little bit down inside. Bowman's done a pretty good job of getting back in transition for the most part. Amor, an open look, makes a bang. Inside out. You want to improve your three-point percentage? Have the ball go inside and then back out. You'll be more open. Georgia Amar good for about two of those per game. That's eight in the ACC so far. This time a 15-footer that's off. Nice box out by Liz Kitley right there. Awusu trying her range. And it won't go that time. Kitley fighting for the offensive rebound. And it will stay, or it will go to Longwood, rather. You can shoot in transition, you can shoot after second shots, or get the ball inside and throw it back out, and you see the defense can't get there. What a great shot by our team. See the defense? A little too late. Amor makes them pay. It's good enough for Kitley's second assist in this game. 11 points, 11 rebounds so far. Two and a half to go. Not even halftime yet. Already there's 11 points and 11 rebounds. Gardner for Liz Kitley. Down a trailer. Looking to work quickly. No one stops ball and she goes distance to distance. One of the golden rules. You must stop the basketball in transition. Coach Lang Montgomery will not be happy about that. And this one coming against uh, Kayla King down inside. That's going to be the team's just first now of this second quarter. Virginia Tech in the bonus. 
Taylor Guyman checking in for the first time today for Coach Kenny Brooks. She's had some quality minutes. Didn't have a lot of stats, but she's given Kenny Brooks some, some good minutes so far early in this season. Outside feed to Venema. Venema is 15 footers off. Virginia Tech on an 18 to zero run in the last five and a half minutes. Longwood has not scored in over six and a half minutes. Trailer down to the baseline to cut the feed. And it's gonna be Soul, rather Taylor Soul, who will go to the free throw line to shoot a pair after she was fouled on the baseline. Soul's gonna get a lot of opportunities from the free throw line. And so far this year, she's been really good there, 81% into traffic. Took her time, elevated, and drew the foul. Virginia Tech out rebounding right now, Longwood, 30 to 13. But a big difference in this game, a lot of second chance opportunities as well. When you look at the offensive rebounds, 10 to two, Virginia Tech advantage. Elizabeth Kidley has outscored Longwood and only has two less rebounds than Longwood. Hmm. Soul's free throw. Not quite. Virginia Tech team, really good for the free throw line this year. Taylor Soul leads the team at her 81%. And she leads Virginia Tech to 39 points now. Chip Davis. Got to find a way to be able to score. She had 14 against Louisville, but just has not been able to get much besides that one jumper to go early on. Here's Chip Davis. One-on-one with Kitley, or with Geierman, rather. Three seconds to find a shot. Chip Davis will let it fly. And around the rim, it won't go. Nice job boxing out by Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech on a 19-0 run, trying to get to 21. George Amor took an extra step. The three-pointer was good, but waved off as Virginia Tech is called for another turnover. Little crossover, trying to create some space and just shuffled those feet a little bit. Kenny Brooks is like, <laughs> Kenny Brooks expressing his disagreement. And they're having a little laugh about it. You can laugh when it's 39 to 7. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll be talking with Coach Kenny Brooks at the halftime. Coming up in 37 seconds. He doesn't give you much coach speak. He tells you, he tells yeah. you what he's thinking. Wide open look. High off glass and right on through for Charlie's Dunn. Nice play right there. In transition, defense closing down on you. A lot of people can execute skills, but can you execute them at full speed with pressure? Eight seconds to let it fly, and there's a three-pointer to put it to double digits now. Ten points for Longwood. Baylor Williams, we mentioned the JMU transfer. And the half-court Eve will not go. Virginia Tech will have a comfortable 31-point lead going into the halftime break. It's 41-10. to 10. Virginia Tech in front. A little bit of a slow start, but they get things figured out. And moving right along, ended on a 21-3 to 3 run. As we're joined with Coach Kenny Brooks. Coach Longwood did not go to the free throw line once in that first half. Amor and Awusu well on their way to get into double figures with seven apiece. George Amo, Amor will get it started now for Virginia Tech here in the third quarter. Hope he's tried a little four round one, getting the ball into Kitley. Not available. Awusu will make them pay as they try to pack the paint. Four players down inside of the paint. She's got some range, and the three pointers started here in the second half. Yeah, that's why the threes are important, regardless. But sooner or later, they've got to go in. That was a nice play, getting the ball to Awusu wide open on the arc. Kitley blocks it out of there for she hadn't Anya. Blo hadn't blocked a lot of shots tonight. That's one thing she hadn't done. But Longwood has not really gone to the rim very much. But this is one on one. Kitley keeps her feet moving, keeps her space, just swats it out of bounds. You can see some of the emphasis coming out of the halftime as Longwood has gone right inside, out of the immediate. They just had not had much of a presence inside. Here's five seconds to find a shot. 
They try to go down to tie, but he's stolen away with the second lap of the shot clock. Owusu looking to run the court and gets the foul to go to the free throw line to earn him the hard way. Getting with a block shot and a steal on that possession. Owusu doing a nice job of running the floor, protecting the basketball. Trying to get that and one opportunity, but she'll go to the free throw line where she is very good. This entire Virginia Tech team for over... Go ahead. I'm sorry. Or for over her career, 75%. she's 80%, only 62 this year. But for her career, she has been an 80% free throw shooter. That gives Virginia Tech now 10 made free throws. They're 10 of 14 for the free throw line for 71%. The Virginia native gets the second one to fly as well. Yeah, Hokie shooting 77 on the year, like we mentioned, almost always near the top of the ACC in free throw percentage. Longwood with a 15-footer from the elbow. That's up no good for Ann Hamilton Leroy. She has not been able to find much offensively so far. It featured her in the beginning, but Leroy has not scored. Just one rebound to speak of. Clear it back over to Amor. Clears it very quickly down over to Kitley. Offensive foul coming against Liz Kitley that time. And it will wave the basket off. Interesting to look at that one. Well, let's do it. Here she does. Get the left wing out just a little bit. I don't know. They had a better view of it, I'll say that. There might be a 46 to 10 scoreboard type of thing. <laughs> you don't think they do that over there. <laughs> Here's a three pointer that flies right on through for Anya. Haven't made very many of them. Just a third three-pointer of this ball game, shooting now a little bit better, up to 25% from three. Oh, nice shot right there, brother. Brooke Anya's brother, a football player at NC State. Athletic bunch. Anya steps out. Kitley does not close completely out. Got to get all the way out there and make her become a driver. Lancers out of the Big South. Picked to finish sixth in this league. Playing against a couple of the top teams in the country. A couple of top ten opponents. Virginia Tech number 11 right now with the country. And Louisville in the top ten. It's just one stolen away. Kentley got the rebound of the feed. Here's Sol. Two on one. She'll take it herself and she'll be fouled. <laughs> she does she get from one end to the other? You were, you're talking about Longwood and the Big South. And, of course, they were the representative in the NCAA last year. Played in the first first four for the women and beat a, a previous opponent for the Hokies, Mount St. Mary's, in a game at Raleigh to advance. You know, we were talking about there's only 34 teams in the country each year that win a game at the NCAA tournament. It's hard enough to get in it, and even that much harder to be able to win a game like this Longwood team did. The first four or two, that was the first time that the women's team, the women's tournament has expanded to 68 teams making the NCAA tournament. Makes sense. Long overdue. Right. Absolutely. As that second free throw won't go. Wide open look for Anya. This time it won't go, but an offensive rebound. Inside and a whistle coming as Taylor Soul got a little bit too much of the body that time. Adriana Ship Davis with a good offensive rebound. She's a real leader on this team and, and a physically and mentally tough player. Watch her root for position right here. Comes up with the ball. Takes it right to Soul. Draws the clear foul by Soul on the arm. It's just the fourth offensive rebound. Longwood's been able to get to the Virginia Tech 10. Offensive rebounds. Close to the basket, and up and in with it. This time, Ann Hamilton Leroy gets her first basket of the ball game coming to the third quarter. So finally showing you some of what we talked about in the open. She's got some scoring ability. We've been very frustrated by this Virginia Tech defense here this afternoon in Blacksburg. The feed inside to Kitley. Double team down underneath the basket, but no problem for Liz Kitley. She's got herself up to up to 13 now back. Does such a good job of getting position without the ball and then and then being patient when she gets the ball. Driving inside a whistle will send Longwood to the free throw line for the very first time in this game. 
Williams, Nate Turner, transfer from Norfolk State. So she kind of hunts those shots and attacked Georgia Amor right there and drew the foul. And Longwood getting to go to the free throw line. How about it? Turner, the Chicago native. Amor was called for her first foul, the team's third, and the first one's up and good. Well, they haven't been able to get to the free throw line much here today, but when they do, they make them in for the most part. Yep, and they've got their very best one on the line right now. Second one's good, no making a count. No announcer jinx right there. No. If you're good enough, it doesn't <laughs> happen to you. <laughs> that was going to be on you if it did. That was on you. <laughs> a little 2 2 one press, a little one 2 one, one press. So this is a team that typically does get to the free throw line. Second of the Big South a season ago, 20 free throws per game, and they get a much-needed turnover to give the ball back over to the Lancers. Yeah, not a lot of pressure in that press, but a bad decision by Georgia Amor right there. Doesn't happen really often. But uh, Longwood hadn't been able to get in the press because they haven't been able to get to the free throw line. Yeah. Working outside in. The cutter in the paint. Shot up for Davis. And it's up and good. Rolls over the side of the rim. Longwood playing some good, good quality minutes here offensively. They get another stolen pass, and it's out of bounds, and it will be last touch by Virginia Tech. Steph Davis playing against one of the better perimeter defenders in the ACC. Keeps her eyes on the basket. Plays through the contact. Nice play by Steph Davis. Chip Davis averages 11 points. She's got herself just two so far. That's been some of the offensive woes that Longwood has been able to see. Some of those players like Davis, Leroy, who typically have been scorers, have not been able to find it this afternoon. Back-to-back -back turnovers for the Hokies against the press by Longwood. That was a concern in the Kentucky game. Shot up and good down to the baseline, driving for Bailey Williams. Got to imagine that's going to be something now that teams look at here, these next couple of opponents in the Big Ten ACC Challenge and the Tennessee opponent out of the SEC are going to look at and think that this is a way that we're going to be able to exploit this Virginia Tech team is the press, right? Yeah, and they've been bothered by it a little bit, but they've got a lot of good ball handlers on the floor. I'd be surprised if that was a good long-term solution. And Greg's got a little long range to her game. She's up to five. She can absolutely step out and shoot that shot. We mentioned the Georgia Tech transfer. Really high basketball IQ. Can play a little bit of every position out there. 31-point Virginia Tech lead. With 5.03 to go in this third quarter. Baseline cut is out of bounds. And that will take us to the media timeout. Asa Shepard going to be getting recognized and going to be joining us here on our broadcast. Coming up on the other side of this. On the point lead right now, an embrace from Coach Kenny Brooks to his all-time leading scorer here in Virginia Tech history. Asia Shepard getting recognized just a couple of minutes ago as we welcome her to our broadcast now. Asia, how was that? Kind of coming out, reconnecting with some of those fans and that. Man, um, Hokie Nation has given me so much. It's been unbelievable to be a part of Virginia Tech for so long and you know when I get back they show me the same amount of love so I mean it's incredible we're going to talk to you a little bit okay. ask you some tough questions all right <laughs> and then we're going to let you do the color here we're going to let you be okay. the analyst for the game cool let's do it how does it feel to be a WNBA champion I can't believe it when people continue to say congratulations and it's 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 hard to put into words Mac I mean you you dream about something like that but it's for it to happen your rookie season can't put it in words. A great career here, followed up by just a dream. A dream. Rookie year. A dream. A dream come true, Mac. Talk talk about, you know, you, you dream of playing in the WNBA, like you said, and, and to get an opportunity to do that, there's very few people in the country that do, is a wusu. And she's feeling it. Hey, 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 she's feeling it. <laughs> she is feeling it. She's making some shots like Asia Shepard used to make out there on the court. <laughs> No, but to that championship run, what was that like? I mean, that, you know, through the playoffs, you never know what's going to happen any given night. Now, what, how did that go about? How was that whole experience? From the start of training camp to the end of the season, no one's mentality changed. Nothing wavered, um, and everybody understood their role, 
um, and they played it to the best of their ability, and everybody came ready to work every day. And it was it was really nice to see all of it come to fruition and, and to see people like Chelsea Gray win another championship and Asia Wilson win her first and Kelsey Plum win, win her first. I mean, it, incredible people that had um, an incredible season, and I'm glad that we were able to finish it off for them. Asia, talk about the difference between, or the similarities between playing college basketball versus playing professionally. Yeah, I mean, I was talking to Coach Brooks, and, you know, the way that we ran our organization and our program was the exact same as the Las Vegas Aces. Wow. So it was very seamless, and Coach knew that. Um, and, and that's how he put me in, this, in the positions to be able to be where I am today. But at the same time, at the, the next level, there's not a lot of, you know, time for you to practice. I mean, we have practice time, but it's not as much time to, you know, really, like, get in a bunch of drills and skill work. It's more so team stuff, scout stuff, and then you're on your own for the rest of the day. And that's that's the biggest difference. Like, I didn't have class. I didn't have to go to study hall. I didn't have any of those other <laughs> things. And to be in Vegas, you know, it's kind of, it would be hard to stay focused, but I had teammates that, that kept us all on track, and we knew what the goals were. Who was your mentor? Asia, uh, Raquana Williams, and Kelsey. And along with everybody else, but they really took me under their wing. How about, I know you've been around practice, been around this program back a couple of weeks now. Uh, what uh, what stands out about all these transfers, this group coming together, and uh, right now they're number 11th team in the country. Zaymour can't get that to go, but what's your takeaway on this team so far? Um, I believe, and I keep telling everybody, that they can win the league, and I believe that they can go Elite Eight, Final Four. Like, they have the potential, and I know it's early, but they're really starting to put it together, and we have every piece that we need um, to this puzzle, and I'm, I'm super excited for, for them, and they're playing really, really, really well. How does it make you feel knowing you are part of what Coach Brooks has built here? His first signing. <laughs> uh, it's so special, Mac. Um, it's, it's just so special to see the things that we talked about finally come into fruition. Um, when I first got here, we were always picked to finish 13th, 14th, and now they're picked to finish second. I mean, it, it's it's incredible, and I'm I'm so happy that these ladies are able to finally get the respect they they so truly deserve. What what drew you is you know Coach Brooks gets the job like he like Max said you're one of the first signees the first signee for Coach Kenny Brooks. What drew you to him? What made you buy into the program and buy into his vision for what this team and this program could become? Everything that he told me, the conversations that we we would have in his office, and of course the skill development. I mean. The things that I do now are we're, we're getting me ready for the pros. And I think that's the advantage that I have. And a lot of coaches um, do not work with their players the, the way that Coach Brooks does day in and day out. So um, I'm just thankful that I had such great pieces around me to be able to fit into the Las Vegas Aces so perfectly. Everybody talks about Coach being a good strategist, a good college basketball coach a good college basketball, especially an offensive mind. Mm -hmm. But talk more about the individual work and the individual attention. And, and like you said, the conversations that you all had that put you in this position. Yeah. Um, first of all, from a skill development, um, we would always watch film, but he was just so good at picking up the minute things in your game and just making you think about the game differently, understanding not uh, how you're doing it, but why you're doing it, um, understanding that it's not about how fast you do it, um, and just understanding the, the critical pieces of the game that I think doesn't get enough attention. A blocking foul this time coming against Virginia Tech as we visit with Asia Shepard, the all-time leading scorer, WNBA champ, the most three-pointers in ACC history. And Greg's going to get charged with a blocking foul that time. How about Kitley? Last couple of times down this court, she's been able to get buckets. 19 points, 13 <laughs> rebounds for her. What is it like playing with someone like Liz Kitley? She's a machine. She's a machine. <laughs> you can't keep her out of the gym. Um, and she's a phenomenal teammate. I mean, all the qualities that you would want a Hokie to have, she has it. And she works so hard for what she has. And again, I don't think she, she gets enough recognition, but I'm finally, I'm, I'm glad that people are finally starting to realize what she can do on a national level. There's Longwood trying to stop what is a 12-0 run for Virginia Tech since you joined us. This is a good little uh, stat so far. Hokies are on a 12-0 run. Okay. This is a blocking foul coming on the other side. They were wanting an offensive foul, but the blocking foul coming against Steph Davis. What do you see here, Asia? What do you see? Driving each side, trailer. 
She's aggressive, man. Once she gets her shoulders past people, it's a wrap. We've been calling her a, a human Roomba. <laughs> <laughs> she goes and stops, she goes and stops, and then gets all the way to the rib. Man, we've got some pieces on this team, Matt. A lot of diverse ways to score the basketball. That's a little bit different. More one-on-one, -on -one, some running the floor, some offensive rebounding that they've added with with Owusu and Seoul. And you, you've got all three levels now. And then you, you bring in the athleticism of Taylor Seoul, uh, her aggressiveness on the glass especially. Uh, it's just it's an edge that it's going to be kind of hard to scout. You know what I'm saying? Three levels is a really good observation because you usually had Kitley inside yes. and the three-point shot. Yes. Now you've got the mid-range game. Yep, and I think that Ashley gives us that advantage too. She has a great handle, but her size, she can post up a smaller guard. Um, and then she can drive past, you know, a, a bigger forward. So uh, we've, we've definitely got some pieces. And, and she and Taylor Soul have been completely comfortable being just a part of this team. Yes. And not being the focal point where when they were both the focal point before. Yes, and it's a testament to what Coach can bring to the table. Skill development is what people want nowadays. And that's that's what you have to do in order to, to, to make it in the professional world. What's next for Asia Shepard? Hopefully another championship. <laughs> um, but just continuing to work, staying overseas, keeping my head down, and, and getting ready for training camp. What are the overseas opportunities? Um, so right now I'm playing with a team in Tenerife, uh, Spain. And, you know, we're playing one game a week, practicing mostly. But really I'm just trying to make sure I have the right film and things so that when I get back to, to Coach Hammond, she, she's happy with what she sees. The shot will not go that time as the buzzer sounded 62 to 21 Virginia Tech. Everything that we discussed is happening now and the, the, the ascent of our program, especially with Coach Brooks at the helm, I mean it's been almost identical to, to James Madison and what he did there. And you know you just expect it to continue to go up and start to raise a, a bunch more banners in here. All right, so Virginia Tech will start with the basketball coming out of that media timeout to start the fourth nice. quarter. Knockdown. Kayla Good. King. Man, when she's open, she's almost automatic. <laughs> automatic. Those are some pretty good numbers. You remember all that there, Asia? 1,883 points. A lot of, a lot of times going through the hoop. Uh-oh. Crazy to think. All right, here's Longwood. Trying to get something going offensively. They've struggled to be able to do that, shooting just 19% for the field, and this jumper won't go inside for Ship Davis, and that's someone that they want to be able to get going. Rather, Tech that was Hamilton playing. Leroy, rather. Asian. Tech has been playing some phenomenal defense today, though. Really moving their feet, cutting people off. I love the ball screen action, Coach. Yep, there it is. Great pass. Wide open. Ah, ah, finish it. Darwin can't get it, but the putback is there. Laura Ford with his second shot. Laura Ford getting on the score sheet for the first time with two. Coach does a great job of clearing out the backside for our post players to work. Long range jumper that's off the mark for Chapman. And a rebound coming inside for Virginia Tech. How difficult is it, Asian, in, in a game like this? 67 to 21 to keep that pedal down, continue to try to keep going, try to get better and not see a team maybe crip in there a little bit or you know kind of mess up here or there yeah i mean it, it's tough to stay focused when you when you look at the scoreboard but this team has a great mentality of knowing when to continue on and, and kind of put their put their foot on the gas a little bit more so whistle coming back here's a long one from king that's off the mark and the lancers will get the rebound Sometimes tough to come back in this building and not be uh, ready to go, ready to suit up out there. Very tough. I had, <laughs> I had Coach and I had a moment before the game, and I told him, I said, it is weird being back here. <laughs> I bet he'd like to see you out there. I'm sure he would. I would love to be out there, too. Nice little block. How about that time? Out of Clara Florida. Thanks to Asia Shepard for joining us. The all-time leading scorer, the WNBA. Who has done that a number of times here tonight. Yeah, and does it a lot of different ways. Creating off the dribble, creating space. Got the got nice mid-range game, but she can also shoot from long range. Five out of six for 15 points. That's efficient, Zach. Yeah.
little full court pressure coming back out. Yeah, doing a little bit in just about every single quarter, trying to find it here in the fourth quarter now as things have slowed down a little bit. Virginia Tech holding to a 46-point uh, lead. The back door over to Kitley. Just gets her own rebound and puts it back in. And the first time it won't go, just try again. I think she's doing that on purpose. Uh, <laughs> elevate the rebound Get a numbers. rebound. <laughs> She's on to 20 now, 21 in fact, to go along with those 14 rebounds. Here's thrown up, down inside, and Janaya Turner getting a basket out of it. He used to accuse Moses Malone of that, <laughs> missing just so he could get more rebounds. Here's Greg, who's had a good night. And this time, Kentley will go to the free throw line. Tell you what, Longwood has not been able to score much, but this is what they want to be able to do when they can. One on one for Janae Turner right there, and take it on Kayla King, who is a really good defender at this level. All right, Liz Kitley to the free throw line now to shoot. Virginia Tech, 13 of 19 for the free throw line. Megan now 14 of 20 as Kitley gets her first one to go. Be perfect from the stripe today. That'll put her up over that 80% mark for the season. Wow, you're doing good. No jinx there that time. I thought you were going to do it. Man. No, I'm out of that. If you're a good shooter, I can't jinx you. That might be the last time we see Liz Kitley on a fabulous night for her. 23 points and 14 rebounds. Fifth consecutive double-double like we mentioned earlier. Here's a long one. Misses it all. Anya, Brooke Anya. Can't get it that time. She's made a couple of those three pointers. She's got five points. Anya will check out. And for the first time, it's going to be Jesse Carbano. After those last couple of troubles, again, the ball pass half court with a full court pressure. No problem this time for Coach Kenny Brooks' squad. Got to get their sixth victory of the year. So Wusu makes the shot after making her own lane. That is so good. When you cross over, dribble, step back, clear some space. That time she didn't clear much space and played through just a little bit of contact on the elbow. It's her first basket of the fourth quarter, but not overall. She's up to 17. Trying to make an 18 at the free throw line now. 17 on seven attempts. Yes. That's just really good. Asia Shepard was extolling the virtues of Ashley Owusu over here off the air and a little bit on the air, too. Yeah. Longwood been able to find a couple of buckets last couple of times down the court. Here's the drive out of Ship Davis, and the shot won't go, and the rebound inside for Taylor Soul. Looking to run the court. Owusu trying to get to 20. She does. 21 for Ashley Owusu. A great job. Taylor Soul running the floor. Okie's filled the lanes, and Owusu standing wide open on the right wing. Longwood going inside over to the right block. Off the mark this time for Steph Davis. Awusu finding Greg this time inside. A little creative move right there by Deasia Greg. Down over to the right block. First time it won't go. Rebound inside. For Ship Davis, now down to the ground. Free basketball, and the Lancers come away with it. Did not hit the rim, so five seconds to shoot, and now a whistle coming to the free throw. Top 25, actually top 15 even, against each other. There's going to be some big ones coming down here this week. Virginia Tech's got a big one in the Nebraska team that always plays good basketball. Gonna be a tough week 
we'll get to really see where the Big Ten and where the ACC stack up when it comes to women's basketball. So the free throw will not go. The first miss of today's game coming from Longwood for the free throw line. ACC with five ranked teams already. Uh, I imagine there'll be another one or two that, that sneak into those rankings at some point in time. But, uh, but yeah, I, I think you can match up the ACC with just about anybody nationally. Driving inside and off the side of the rim, it falls for Ship Davis. A 7th, 8th, 10th, 11th, 13th. You see the top 25 now. Here's even some of the changes that I know we've talked about. Virginia Tech, 11th in the country right now. They were picked to finish second in the league, but yet overall nationally picked to finish fourth in the ACC. Yeah. That, uh, somebody's wrong. Yeah. We don't know which one yet, but somebody's wrong right there. But the Hokies are moving up from, from originally 13th, was which was their highest preseason ranking ever. And the uh, brand new rankings are going to come out tomorrow from the Associated Press. Virginia Tech number 11 right now. I think tomorrow they should move into the top 10, maybe as high as number 9 with some of those teams falling in the top 10. If they move up to the number 9 spot, that's the first time since 1999. The Virginia Tech Hokies were number 9 of the country as Trailer lets a long one go. That, that's kind of where I see them falling. Is that how you see it too? There's no question. In... Uh it could even be higher. We have two quality wins over Kentucky and Missouri during this off this off week, the, during the week before the uh, polls come out. Uh, and it's going to be the fifth one coming against now Adriana Ship Davis. She was out of control driving inside an offensive one to give her her fifth. After foul trouble came early in this game, they have, for the most part, tightened that up a little bit. But Ship Davis will be the uh, or. Not Ship Davis, uh, rather, yeah, Ship Davis will be the first one to fall out for the Lancers. Taylor Soul right there did a great job of moving their feet against a, a full speed dribbler coming that right at her. A little full court pressure again, and the Hokies break it. Try to go down inside of this one, stolen it away. Hokies handled the hard part of that defense and then made a poor turnover there. Top of the key, three is off this time for Hartley. Far four, getting some extended minutes. Taylor Soul jumps up and comes down with it. She just does some athletic things that, that Virginia Tech have, hasn't had on their roster. Throwing it ahead, little lob right here by Taylor Gaiman, and play through the contact. Taylor Soul, one of the best athletes in women's college basketball. Maybe I should just say college basketball, Yeah, that might right? be best, yeah. The transfer, one of those that Coach Kenny Brooks got to hit the transfer portal in a hard way. Free throws up and good. There's a left wing three that's left short. Good hustle right there. Steph Davis. She's been in the middle of a lot of action on both ends of the floor today. She did not get there in time, and we'll go back over to Virginia Tech. A 54-point lead for the Virginia Tech Hokies. They'll be able to get 6-0 on the year. Longwood will fall to 1-5. and five. Final three minutes and 10 seconds to go. Here's Trailer. That's a long-range three-pointer fly. That's halfway into the out. Give credit to Longwood. They've come out here in the second half, continued to try to get baskets after falling behind quite heavily in that first half. And yet again, Taylor Soul running the court, and getting the right-handed layup. Nice vision by Trailer. Great job of running the floor by Taylor Soul. Drive coming out of Hall and a whistle coming out of bounds. And let's take a look at what going to be a fun one. Deja Kelly, Coach Courtney Banghart, they've got they've been playing well here in the pre-conference season. What a week for North Carolina because they're also going to match up with number eight Indiana too. So a couple of top top ten programs in a matter of just a week. Here's the first long one. Up and in for Geierman. 
Taylor Guyman, the senior. She gets it to go through Virginia Tech, running along. She's through her career, and she is hung in there. Really a talented player, can play multiple positions. Really nice to see her rewarded with her first points of the season, although she's played some quality minutes for yeah. Kenny Brooks. There's a 30-second timeout taken, and there was a big-time swat out of there by Dunn. Charlize Dunn knocks that out of there, but yeah, timeout taken by Longwood that time. Just a quick 30-second one that took us to break. The bench had a big reaction to that block. Tells you a lot what they think of Garman, right? Or not not just Garman, obviously, but uh, of Dunn that time with the block, right? The freshman with the swat out of bounds. Second team foul. All right, Longwood will take it out underneath their own basket. High off glass. Physical that time, and trailer falls down to the court. Yeah, two players just going for the ball, ended up at the same spot on the floor. Deja Reed, the foul. Watch her, she's coming for the rebound. Just an awkward situation. And okay, on a trailer, gets to go to the free throw line. Well, a couple of days off now for Coach Kenny Brooks and his team. They'll be back right here at home against Nebraska. Coming up, a victory here today should put them 6-0. and oh. And, Mac, what, uh, if you're Coach Kenny Brooks coming off a nice, solid victory like this here at home, coming back from the Bahamas, what do you take away from a game like this? Well, you know, Coach Brooks is, is still searching for the right combinations. Who can play with whom? Who can he count on every single night? Trust is a big part of what Kenny Brooks' program is all about, and he, he needs to be able to trust. Not that you'll play perfectly every night, but, but the level of effort and attention and focus has to be there for him to trust in you at critical situations. That's what he's going to be looking at today and in practice the next few days. Down the ground, and an offense or a foul coming as a push was issued this time by Bailey Williams. And Virginia Tech will go on the other side and continue to shoot. And Nebraska, a top 25 opponent in Tennessee. Then you start up with ACC play, Boston College, Notre Dame all coming up. It is right into the heart of that schedule coming up now. Yeah, it's going to be a really interesting race in the ACC this year. We've talked about it before. Louisville picked to win the league. Virginia Tech picked to finish second. NC State lost their point guard, lost their center. They've reloaded. They're good again. North Carolina has a talented group of players led by Deja Kelly. Notre Dame with Olivia Miles uh, as, a, as an exciting point guard as, as there is in the country. And, and so much depth in this league. There, there are no easy nights in the ACC women's basketball program. A little full court pressure to get this basketball down the court. Trailer pushes it up. Nice job, Clara Ford flashing to help break the press. Taylor Longwood, Guyman. Longwood still playing hard and forced the turnover. Offensive foul, we'll send it back over to Longwood. How about Longwood? They're coming off a tough one against a top 10 team in Louisville. 137 last week. This one's going to be a tough one to be able to flip the script. They got Draxel, Richmond, and then a Wake Forest team on the horizon as well. If you're on the other side, your coach, Erica Lang Montgomery, what are you telling your team? I mean, you know, so many new faces, and, of course, her her face is new to these these players, too. So that they're continuing, but she's very encouraged by the fact that they have bought in and they continue to play hard, play together, care about each other. They just have to be playing a little better by the time they get in league play. They've got a tough non-conference part of the schedule. Look at the postseason participants right there. That's nearly perfect, right? Every single one of them played in postseason last year. Yeah, Coach Montgomery said, we just, the big thing is stay together through this. It can be difficult. It can be rough. In the early part of the season, when you're going around the country and playing some of these top 25 opponents, but being able to stay together is a big part of the next couple of weeks. Down to the key three that's up and won't go for Basicki. Here on the other side, Longwood fouled at the line is Chardonnay Hartley. Now the freshman out of the Bronx, really super quick little freshman. To a highly ranked recruit 
kind of a drive first player. Got free throw line range. We'll take the open three. After a couple of competitive games for Virginia Tech down to the Bahamas, good too to be able to get some of these young freshmen, sophomores, some good playing time the last couple of minutes in the game in which Virginia Tech leads at 87 to 26. Got trailer out there to run things, keep the keep the ball in the hands of the veteran. Free throw good, and that puts it back to a 60-point Virginia Tech lead. Shot clock is turned off, so the Hokies are able to hold if they so choose. Just some good ball, ball movement outside, and Trailer now is going to be tripped. And with the bonus to the free throw line, yet another opportunity now for Kiana Trailer. Yeah, this is an opportunity to be able to get that 10th point. She's already got the 10 rebounds. And she does. A double-double for Trailer, who had a great run there in the Bahamas and bringing it back home here in Blacksburg, Virginia. Yeah, she's thrown in five assists for good measure, too. She's had a heck of a, a three-game series here with Kentucky, Missouri, and Longwood. Seven seconds remain. And a whistle comes with 3.9. This last minute is taking a while now with so many fouls called on either side. Get some young players in there and to the free throw line to be able to shoot. Now we'll go Chardonnay Hartley. Been a few guards out of the Bronx, New York over the <laughs> yeah, course thanks. of history. Good basketball played up there in New York. Hartley has scored all her points tonight from the free throw line. Looking to get her fourth. She can't quite. Virginia Tech with the basketball. They'll hold this out and they'll hold on to their sixth victory of the year. Coach Kenny Brooks' squad stays perfect. 6-0. Longwood will fall to now 1-5. and five. Virginia Tech kept the penal down all throughout Mac and gets away with a big victory here at home. Yeah, uh, there were there were good spots on the offensive end, but the defense was consistently good and I know Kenny Brooks will be pleased with that effort.